It brought us the Roaring Twenties, the Space Age, and the Information Age, the 50s and the 60s. Radio, television, satellites, and cell phones all caught up in a swirling sea of change. And it introduced a new voice in music, our voice. From the ground, to the air, to the sky, to the concert hall, this has been the American Century. Welcome to the American Century, an exploration of America's modern musical legacy, hosted by David Dubow. The American Century is brought to you by American Century Investments. American Century, with over 40 years of investment management experience. Once again, WQXR 96.3 FM is proud to present The American Century. I'm David Duval, and each Sunday at 12.05 p.m., we celebrate the music of American-born composers of the 20th century. Around 1850, the French writer Alexis de Tocqueville declared that America was the only country which passed from barbarism to decadence without an intervening civilization. He would certainly have been shocked by his words if he had known what America would accomplish in the 20th century. From Kitty Hawk to the moon, this has indeed been the American century. Today we bring together six very different American-born composers, some of them I hope to introduce to you for the first time. They are Halsey Stevens, Charles Griffiths, Mark Grant, Robert Muzinski, Carl Anton Wirth, and Harold Morris. Let's begin with the fugue from Halsey Stevens' Quintet. Stevens was born in 1908. He studied with the eminent composer Ernst Bloch. Throughout his life, Stevens taught composition at several universities, mostly in California. Mr. Stevens is probably, though, best known not for his music, but for a fine biography of Bella Bartok. His quintet was composed in 1946. It's in five movements, of which we hear the fourth movement, a fugue. The quintet is scored for flute, piano, violin, viola, and cello. The performers are from the Montclair Quartet with Leslie Petty's piano and Wendell Dobbs' flute. So let's begin today's edition of the American Century with music of Halsey Stevens, who passed away 10 years ago in 1989.
You've been listening to Halsey Stevens' Fugue from his 1946 quintet. The performers were from the Montclair String Quartet with Leslie Petty's at the piano and Wendell Dobbs' flute. In Elmira, New York in 1884, an American genius was born, Charles Tomlinson Griffiths. He lived only a short life and died just before he was 36 years old. To make a living, he taught at a boys' school at Terrytown, New York, just scraping by. On previous programs, we've heard his White Peacock, that's his most famous piece, and Poem for Flute and Orchestra. I was quite gratified to receive a couple of letters thanking me for introducing his music to the writers. Griffith's life was difficult professionally and personally. You can read about him in a good biography by Edward Maisel, published by Knopf. On today's program, we listen to the gorgeous three poems of Fiona MacLeod, The Lament of Ian the Proud, beginning with, What is this crying that I hear in the wind? Followed by, Thy dark eyes to mine. Thy dark eyes to mine, lamps of desire. Oh, how my soul leaps, leaps to their fire. And last, the rose of the night the dark rose of thy mouth. Louise Toppin is the soprano, and Paul Freeman conducts the Czech National Symphony Orchestra, three poems of Fiona MacLeod by Charles Tomlinson Griffiths.
What did you think of them? Those were Impressionist works by Charles Griffiths. Three poems of Fiona MacLeod. Louise Toppin was the soprano. Paul Freeman conducted the Czech National Symphony Orchestra, of which he is the director and conductor-in-chief. It's now time for the first appearance on these programs of music by New York-born Mark Grant. Mr. Grant especially likes to compose for the stage in varied guises. He also likes to write prose. And in the last months, he has published a book through Northeastern University Press called Maestros of the Pen, A History of Classical Music Criticism in America. Perhaps you read the rave review in the New York Times. Well, the book is a winner, a truly readable cultural history, where Mr. Grant brings to life the people who helped bring to life American musical criticism in the American century. On this program, we'll hear Waltz Metamorphosis for Guitar Trio. Mark Grant told me that although he's a pianist, he's fascinated by the guitar. He suggests that perhaps the piece is an imagined soundtrack for an image like Picasso's painting, The Three Musicians. Well, here it is, Mark Grant's charming and subtle waltz metamorphosis. The three guitarists are Paul DeCoster, Lars Franzen, and Zeth Himmelhoch. Thank you. 
We've just heard Mark N. Grant's Waltz Metamorphosis for Three Guitars. The guitarists Paul de Coster, Lars Franzen, and Seth Himmelhoch. The American Century is brought to you by American Century Investments with over 40 years of investment management experience. I'll return in a moment when we continue with three more American composers. This is David Dubal. Let's turn to music by Robert Mozinski, who recently had his 70th birthday. He grew up in Chicago and studied composition with the wonderful Russian-born composer Alexander Cherepnin. Muzhinsky wrote his Symphonic Dialogues, Opus 20, in 1965. And let's hear it with Paul Freeman conducting the Czech National Symphony. Thank you. 
That was Symphonic Dialogues by the distinguished composer Robert Muzinski, who has lived in Tucson, Arizona for many years. I hope he was in New York today to hear his music on WQXR. The score was conducted by Paul Freeman, leading the Czech National Symphony. Now let's hear a bit of music, Four Minutes in Fact, by Karl Anton Wirth, W-I-R-T-H. He's an American composer born in 1912 and lived until 1986. This is from an intriguing CD called An American Tribute to Sigurd Rascher. He was the distinguished classical saxophonist who was responsible for so many pieces written for his instrument. This one by Wirth is called Dance, and it's for alto saxophone and soprano saxophone with orchestra. It was composed for Rascher and his daughter and first played in 1958. In this performance, we hear Stefan Haas, soprano saxophone, and Lawrence Gvatz, alto sax. Kirk Trevor is conducting the Martinu Philharmonic. <laughs> Thank you. 
That was Dance by Carl Wirth, 1912-1986. The performers, Stefan Haas and Lawrence Gwatz, were the soloists, with Kirk Trevor conducting the Martineau Philharmonic. To conclude today's program, The American Century, we listen to a CD titled Claudette Sorel Plays Three American Piano Concertos. I've chosen the first movement today of the Piano Concerto by Harold Morris. Morris was born in 1890 and died in 1964. For many years he taught at the Juilliard School. He is a composer who was, alas, almost forgotten today. This large-scale piano concerto, written in full-blown romantic fashion, was begun in 1927 and was published in 1932. Timothy Gilligan writes, The outer movements incorporate both complicated African dance rhythms and the New York in the 20s kind of streetwise energy. The pianist Claudette Sorel has been a lifelong champion of American music, premiering works composed for her by Hanson, Foss, Creston, and Menon. We shall hear Miss Sorel from a live performance of January 1962 with Richard Korn conducting Orchestra of America. Here it is, the first movement of Harold Morris's Piano Concerto. <laughs>
We have concluded today's The American Century with the first movement of Harold Morris's Piano Concerto, a work from the late 1920s. The performance is by Claudette Sorel. Richard Korn conducted Orchestra of America. It was a live performance from 1962. I hope you enjoyed today's program representing the work of six American composers, Stevens, Griffiths, Grant, Muzinski, Wirth, and Morris. The American Century is brought to you by American Century Investments with over 40 years of investment management experience. Return with us next Sunday at 12.05 p.m., where we celebrate the American composer of the American century. This is David Duval. Thank you for listening.